Yo, what's up, dudes? So today I thought we would look at the spark again. I'm kidding. I want to show you the new Spark Mini. The Spark Mini is here. Let's get that lined up so you can see both of them here. All right. So here's the, the original Spark. Maybe we'll go like that. A little bit like this. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. So what's the difference between the original Spark and the new Spark Mini? Well, there's uh, quite a few differences. Physically, software-wise, they seem to be about the same. Spec-wise, two stereo speakers, 40 watts. Two stereo speakers, 10 watts. Uh, plus a passive radiator at the bottom. This does not have a passive radiator, although it is a ported in the front. So this uses a port to get extra bass. This uses a passive radiator to get extra bass. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, they both have auxiliary in. They both have a USB connection. This is USB-C. This is the older USB-B type, A to B. Um, they're both Bluetooth. Um, they both work with the Spark Amp. Uh, that's it. The big difference between the two is this has no way to power it other than with a power outlet, other than AC power. Uh, this has, and a lot of people when I got this, they're like, can you put batteries in it? Can I take it out portable? It's like, actually, no, no, you can't. You can't put batteries in this one either, but it comes with a lithium ion battery in it that can be charged, takes about three hours to get to a full charge. And then it goes for about eight hours as long as you're not cranked up at max volume. If you're like mid volume or lower, you should be good for about eight hours. Um, and that's it. It came with a little carry strap handle. And it came with a USB cable. And that's it. It did not come with a power supply because it assumes that you'll have a way to, uh, to get USB power. Almost everybody has a USB charger these days. And it's, I think, 5 volt 2 amp which is a pretty standard phone slash tablet um, you know uh, power uh, source so what else can I tell you about the two um, the the base out of this is surprising <laughs> it was shaking the table when I was doing some of the backing tracks so I can just tell you that it it's sound belies its uh, form factor it is a much uh, larger sounding uh, than its small size. In terms of weight, it's much lighter. Although it's got a little bit of heft to it, uh, it's probably half the weight or less uh, than, the, than the original Spark. And um, hmm, I guess that's, uh, that's about it. It seems like the software-wise, they're the same. Uh, when I was going through and checking out patches, all the patches that I had created for the Spark loaded and worked in the Spark Mini. So it doesn't seem like software-wise there's any difference. It's really the physical differences. Um, uh, one other thing, the speakers on this are actually angled back. So the two front speakers aren't, like these are exactly flat to the front. These are actually angled back a little bit. And, uh, and that's it. Um, just one other, just a little technical thing. <clears throat> this can function as a USB speaker. So I was getting a little frustrated. I could get the, the iPad to work and control the amp, but I couldn't get the backing track to sound. And I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. It has two Bluetooth um, uh, connections. One connection is for the digital control of the amp, and the other is for just the audio stream, right? Two independent um, the Bluetooth uh, connections. So I was like, oh, you, you don't have the Bluetooth audio connection set up. And that's why the audio was coming out of my, my iPad and not out of, the, out of the unit. So I switched it over to the, um, you know, to the mini. And then I had no audio. That's a little weird. It stopped playing out of the iPad, but it wasn't coming out of here. And, and I couldn't figure it out. I was like, oh, well. I got. What am I doing wrong here? 
and I, you know, just out of desperation, I you start you know pressing every button you can. <laughs> and what I did was I unplugged the USB. I was charging it up, right? First thing I said, like when you get a new phone, you get anything new that has battery in it, you want to charge it up. So I had it plugged into the front of the computer, not into a power supply. Well, this must have recognized it was a computer. And I think it set itself up. Apparently, it's a USB speaker. And I don't know if this works as a USB speaker out or if it, that you can plug this in and it works as a USB speaker. So maybe it was waiting to hear audio over the USB or it was sending the audio over the USB. Either way, it wasn't coming out of the speaker. It was going somewhere else. The second I unplugged that USB, boom, instantly it started coming out of this. I was like, oh, there it is. There it is. So if you're running into some frustration... And you're trying to pair it up, and you're like, Jesus, it's not working. I, I'm not getting the audio out of anywhere. Do you have it plugged into a computer over the USB cable? Because that was the fix for me. Just second I unplugged it, it was fine. It may not have even done that if it was plugged into a power supply because the Spark wouldn't recognize that as a device that's capable of either being a speaker or providing audio. So just a little bit of, uh, you know... Um, technical support <laughs> because uh, I went I went through this about an hour ago trying to figure this out but uh, I got it all working it all sounds fine everything sounds awesome it's all good so let me grab a guitar let me plug it in and I'm going to use my little XY recorder because I think it's very important that we don't listen to the audio over USB I think it's really important that we listen to the audio from the speakers in the unit so uh, I like to use the XY recorder and get actual audio. Because of that, I'm going to have to use my, my, my terrible <laughs> close-up mic because I'm going to have very loud audio in the room. Right? I'm going to crank this little amp up and we're going to record it you know, with some mics. Uh, so I need to use this, which um, isolates more and it's facing away, other than my, my condenser mic, which picks up every little, every little sound in the room. So... Um, We'll switch over to that rig. Apologies up front for this mic because I know a lot of people don't like it, but it's the situation we find ourselves in. But uh, let me get the guitar. Let's get this all hooked up. I'll see you in a sec, and we'll check it out. Yo, what's up, dudes? We are back. <laughs> So I'm recording this with my little um, uh, XY stereo mic. So you, you can hear all the stereo goodness that comes out of the little Spark Mini. Um, I have the iPad hooked up, and I'm just going through a couple of the patches. Again, the patches really haven't changed. I could call up my SFB patches, and they will load into it, and they all work fine. So I, again, software-wise, I don't think there's really much of a change. It's really just the physical difference with the larger speakers, but as you can as you can hear, it's got wonderful bass. Let's try another patch here. These are some of the hardware patches. solo <laughs> So I hope that comes across on the recorder is what I'm hearing in the room because it really sounds great. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the Spark, if you are familiar with the Spark, I've pretty much told you everything you need to know. It's got the battery power. It's a smaller form factor. It's less money. And uh, it's got a 
um, a, a passive radiator in the bottom, unlike the the original Spark. Um, but software wise, <clears throat> it seems to be exactly the same. So I can, if you're familiar with the the software, and we talked about this in the original Spark video, there's actually multiple levels of patch saving, right? So there's the four patches that are built right in, and you notice when I go over here and I click it, you'll see on this side there's a change, right? So on the right as I move through the patches on the hardware side, the software side shows. <laughs> Right, the stuff, and then I go over to the next one. And again to the next one. And finally, the last one. Right. Uh, but I could leave this on any one of these and go over here. And rather than using the hardware one, again, you can save anything you want to that location. Right? I can change the amp. I can change the sound. I can do whatever I want in that spot. But there's four built into the amp. So if you want to just take this out, you can imagine yourself trekking out into the middle of the woods and then <laughs> setting this up. Uh, you would have, without an iPad, without a phone, without anything, you would be able to switch through four different patches. The patches that you loaded, they come preloaded with some patches in there, but you can set those four up to be whatever you want. But it's only four when there's like thousands of patches for the, for the Spark. So how do you get to the rest of the patches? Well, on your iPhone, iPad, Android tablet, whatever you have, you go up to this left-hand corner here, Right, this where it says lead, where it says the name. It's got that little drop down um, arrow there, that little this little thing right here. You just tap on that, <clears throat> and it brings up a window. <clears throat> and now that window, you can see hardware is lit up. These are the ones that are in the hardware. Right, I'll go back to this one. Right, a little different. Go back to the rhythm. But then, then the rest, you see it says all, and then pop, and then blues, and then rocker. Those are filters, right? So right now it's filtering out only the patches that are found on the hardware. We could do all the patches, but that's a really long list. So they set it up so you can, you can uh, filter it out so I can go to pop, and these are all just the pop ones, right? I can go to blues, Oop, if I can tap it, and there's, there's all the blues ones and so forth. Rock metal alternative are there any other oh yeah and then a uh, bass and acoustic um yeah if i believe it or not and, and the original spark could do this too but i don't think i mentioned it earlier um you can actually plug a bass into this thing and an acoustic not at the same time there's only one input but you know what i'm saying it's like a uh, six string guitar four string bass you know acoustic guitar whatever um it's uh it's pretty slick. Um, so let's say we, we, we pick one out. We want to go with one of these. We go with a wooden bridge, you know. Right, or stone breaker. Oh, well, maybe I like that one, right? And I want to and I want to keep that. How do I get it actually on my, because we're just sort of previewing it now. How do I get it like on here, right? And there it is. It's just. Uh, the other thing we could do is we can turn any of these components on and off. And as, as we mentioned in the first Spark video, you can't change this lineup. It's always gate, <clears throat> and then a compressor and a wire, a drive. And there's really only one gate. So if I, like, click the gate and turn it on, and if I double tap and double tap, there's this nothing else, right? It's either, it's either on or off. Right. Right. Tap it once, it grays out, turns it off. Tap it, uh, whoop, right there, right on the, right on the um, LED itself, it turns it on. Can moving that, yeah, you can push it up, 
and you can pull it down. There's, there's a couple of different ways to achieve the same exact function. All right. But when I go to compressor wah and I tap that, now if I double tap, it brings up more, right? There's only one gate, but there's a few items that can go under the compressor wah um, section of the chain. And these are here. What do you have? Six different items, right? Including the new uh, JH Legendary Wah, right? Um, we go to a drive. Again, all these drives. Now, I did notice that that had a little lock on it. I wonder if that's a purchase. Like, if I click on that. All right, so you, you have to buy the Jimi Hendrix Experience if you want to get that. So, um it looks like some of the items that if it has a little lock next to it, it means that it's a uh, it's an add-on, an in-app purchase, if you will, uh, which is something I don't remember from the from the prior version. We'll go to the clone drive, or we can go to the tube drive. Oop, did I get that? Nope. Booster. All right. What about tube screen? And then if I, oop, if I go to the, change the tone, the level, and the amount of overdrive. Right? Maybe I maybe I do want that gate on. Yeah. I'm not crazy about that delay though. We bring that up a little bit. A little bit more. A little bit. Uh, and then maybe we can set the, um, instead of BPM, there we go. Set it to milliseconds. <laughs> I hope this comes across on the on the recording as good as it's coming across in the room because I'll tell you it sounded pretty good. Alright, we can bring that I got that drive all dimed out. We'll bring that back a little bit. It sounds pretty good. Uh, let's go to the next one. This is the mod. Now, this is off. If I pull that down, it'll turn it on. Hear the trim turn on. All right. And if I double tap that, tap a tap a tap tap, is it up here? Tap tap. One of these tap tap. There it is. <laughs> tap a tap a tap a. Uh, little tap 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 a roo. Uh, you can see all the other ones that are here, right? All the available uh, different uh, mod EQ and all the stuff that's available, right? E guitar EQ, tremolo square, which is kind of like one of those glitch tremolos. Tremolator, which is what we have going. I could I could call up the vibe. Um, let's hit that down. Thank <laughs> you. 
speed up a little bit. Right? Uh, if that's too much for you, just just double tap. Oops, sorry. Again, up there. Double tap up there. You can bring in a chorus. Uh, almost a little um, John Schofield ish, you know. And so forth. Univibe. Um, hit that. Vibrato. Let's uh, go there. Bring the speed down. And the depth. You can hear it's going almost a little bit too out of tune. So you just bring that back a little bit. Right? And then, of course, you have the reverb. And if you double tap the reverb, there's a whole bunch of reverbs you can choose from, you know. Let me just turn um, that delay off. I'm sorry. Here we go. And um, let's just bring this up. I'll show you the... Uh, we'll bring the level up. Bring the time up. All right, bring that level way up. That sounds great. I hope it's coming across again on the recorders as it's as it's sounding in the room. Again, I'll double tap. We can try the plate long. I can bring the level down a little bit. All right. So there's just a little background in the, the main amp section. <clears throat> now, if you notice on the bottom... There's actually several different locations, right, all within the, uh, oh, hold on, oh, sorry, I did not mean to do that. There we go. So if you look at the bottom, you'll notice that there's actually four different main sections. But before we go there, I just want to show you one more thing about the patch section and the amp section. So remember, we could go up here, and we, we could choose all different types of, right, there's SFB Blues. <laughs> SFB Blues Delight. Blues Trim. But what if none of those are doing it for me? What if I don't like any of the ones I'm finding on here, right? I'm going through and I'm like, meh. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's, you know, it's not an exhaustive collection, right? I mean, I'm going through it. There's not a ton there. That's because I'm only still on the iPad device, right? So four patches on the unit, and same with the original Spark. I think it was only four patches. A lot more patches on the iPad, iPhone, whatever you're using, Android, tablet, whatever. But then if you want even more patches, where you really have to go is up to this little cloud button in the upper right. See that little cloud? Go up there, tap that little cloud, little tap a tap Now you're on the cloud-based stuff. And these are, uh, it's a lot longer. 
right? It, it might not look like much, but when you get to the bottom, it will, you know how that it auto adds more choices. So you're like, I'm all the way to the bottom, and then all of a sudden the bottom becomes the middle, right? Right. You get all the way to the bottom, and then all of a sudden this shoots up, and there's even more, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And again, you can break it down by pop. You can break it down by blues, right? And if you want to check it out, just, you know, hit the SRV. And now it's loaded. All right, I could go to this one. And it's giving me a preview. I could go here. All right, I could go to rock. Any one of these previews. Right, and it brings it up. Maybe I like one of these. Maybe I go to this gold phase. I say, oh, I kind of like that one. For me to download it, right, I, I click on this little this little arrow here, right? Uh, is that the upload? I think it's here, right? Tap that. Yeah, there it goes. And then it, you download it. Right, you tap on. Hold on, let me cancel that. Show you. Right, this little download button, right? And it's telling you how many times it's been downloaded. 13, is it 13? No, th sorry, 135,000 times. <laughs> so, pretty pretty popular patch. You tap on that, and it brings it up. It says, you know, do you want to save this? And then it says, do you want, wh where do you want to save it? You want to name it? You can save it in a different area, right? All these different areas you can save it to. But rock is the correct answer, so we'll leave it on rock. And we just tap save, and now it's saved to my iPad. And now I don't have to go back out to the cloud. I don't need an internet connection. Um, it's actually on the iPad device. And of course, if I go to, um, if I close this out by tapping that, and I go back here, and I'm in Rock, you'll see that at the bottom of my list is Classic Goldface. You see that? So I was able to download a patch. And store it locally, so if I don't have an internet connection, I don't have to go back out there and, and download it again. Right, uh, it's already on the device. And uh, all right, so that's enough about amps. I covered a lot of this in the first Spark video. Let's move on to the second big section, which is backing tracks and jamming. Again, there, this Henders thing at, at the top it looks like there's some in-app purchases. But say uh, you wanted to do a smart jam, you could just hit blues, and it just starts playing. This is, I think, a blues in C. And so forth, right? I don't want to bore you to tears here. But you get the idea. It just whipped that up. And uh, and, and you can change that and, you know, you do and, and once you're in here and you're in blues, right, it says blues at the top, I can tap blues. I just tap that. Right. Uh, no. Uh, is it there? Oh, yeah. You can just go. I'm sorry. Those left and right arrows. It's just a... Right, and again, you can keep doing that. Right, that gives you another one. So you can just keep going through and just saying, Give me another blues track, or I can go, I think, back. Back to the prior one, right? On to the next one, right? Like a six eight, a little shuffle feel, and this just keeps going, right? There's all these different ones. All right, so let me get rid of that. Those are the smart jams, 
smart chimps automatically created on the fly by the software. All right. Below that are these wonderful backing tracks. And these are out on the internet, um, mostly through um, uh, YouTube. And you can choose, you know, one of these tracks and it will play it back. Just tap that. Um. So, again, you can take that backing track, uh, and you can even just tap a little section for loop, and it will loop the same section over and over and over again. It takes a little section of it. So pretty pretty smart. Uh, and, again, you can pick any of these. It will just start. Again, you just pick a track. What I like about it is it used to keep your recently played tracks on a separate section, and now uh, they just keep it right in the whole jamming area, right? So the top stuff is your recently played, which makes sense, right? Because you're jamming along with the track, and you go back to jam along with it again, and now it's you know uh, lost amongst thousands of other backing tracks. You're like, oh, well, where was that one I was working on that recently played? keeps a list of all your recent tracks so you can jam over the same track and get good at playing, you know, over that particular track and really work out your your improv, you know, using the same chords over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, that's working it out. <laughs> uh, so that's the, the, the backing tracks. Uh, new for this, I don't remember this from the original Spark, but is the video. And, uh, of course, I, I locked down like, the camera access on my iPad, so it's telling me my, my camera access has been denied, and it, it can't shoot it. But it's going to use my iPad to shoot a video, and it's going to record my guitar, and it's going to do everything, and it'll put it all together. I haven't uh, tried that feature out, but I think this is new uh, for uh, the, the Spark Mini. I don't remember that on the original Spark. I'm going to hit cancel, and then we just get out of there. And then the last thing is what? Just, um, just your settings. All right. So there you have it. The Spark Mini. Let's find a good patch. What was my? Kind of like that. Uh, is it the? That sounds really good in the room. Well, there you go. All right, dudes, I will leave a link in the description for more information. The Spark Mini, uh, keeping the whole Spark uh, ecosystem alive. Uh, again, uh, 10 watts. Two two-inch speakers, a passive radiator port on the bottom, USB-C, auxiliary in, headphone out, Bluetooth pairing, works as a Bluetooth and a USB speaker. I think I covered all the points. There you go. All right, dudes, as always, thanks so much for hanging out, and rock on. <laughs>